Welcome to the Fully Involved Podcast, Episode 7. I'm your host, Rick Stevens. We have a special guest here today, brought to you by Local 1403, a man who needs no introduction. Jason Patton, uh, Fire Department Chronicles. Uh, I'm a South Florida firefighter for 15 lovely years so far, Fire Department Coffee, just all over the interwebs, you know? Boom. <laughs> so I'm glad to have you here. Glad to have you sit down and have a talk with us. Um, so I'm... Um, for the people who don't really know you, can, can you tell us a little bit something about yourself? Who is Jason? Who is Jason? Uh, it's a lot. Uh, I don't sleep very often. Uh, just a normal guy. I grew up in a, a, a normal family. My mom, my dad was a mechanic. And my mom did uh, mortgages. She's been in the mortgage business her entire life. I, I actually got into the fire service just because of happenstance. My a friend of mine. I uh, said, hey, you should try out EMT school, went to EMT school, loved it, uh, and, and kind of then went paramedic fire, and now I'm here. I, I tried being a mechanic. I was a horrific uh, mechanic. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, man, it's it, that's pretty much the the, nut sh the nutshell. No, yeah, I don't know. Whatever that phrase is, that that thing. How do mechanics do deal with cars these days? Because back in the days when... I wasn't a mechanic, but yeah. we changed the oil. We did basic stuff, and you can get to stuff. Yeah. Nowadays, you open up your hood, and you like, you gotta take everything apart, or you Bro. can't even get to things. Yes. Yeah, even when I got into it, you know, my father was a mechanic for twenty years prior to me getting into it, so he would tell stories about like what the cars were like, like what what it was like working on whatever it was at the time, but. Even when I got into it, they had just started really, really, really getting computerized, which was cool to see. And then uh, I remember the, like the Ford Windstar, that was the first time they had like 10 plus computers inside of it. So even when I was getting into it, it was insane, just the amount of technology and data. And then like you said, just trying to access things was, it was so bad, man. So it was fun to work on like an older car every once in a while to uh, enjoy the little bit. Because uh, engineers don't care about us, man. They're, they're like, oh, yeah, just just shove this oil filter directly above the exhaust manifold and uh, right over the CV axle. Let, let him burn himself. Who cares? <laughs> so we, we kind of skipped over your childhood. I don't know. Like, what, how were you? Do you have any brothers, sisters, mm -hmm. family down here? Were you guys originally from Florida? Yep. Yeah, uh, born and I'm born and raised in Florida as, as well as my two brothers. I have uh, two brothers, uh, Josh and Colby. My uh, one brother is uh, 36, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was his watch that just went off. He forgot to silence it before the podcast. Uh, but <laughs> uh, then my uh, my other brother is uh, 32. He uh, they're great, man. They're they're my parents were like amazing. We we grew up in a in a great uh, household. My mom was originally from Kentucky. My dad was like uh, from Ohio, and. Uh, just a normal like lifestyle. I was a really bad kid. I actually ended up on a uh, a thing called, or in a place called Eagle Academy at one point in time. Yeah, do uh, there, tell. Do th tell. There's a documentary on me. Uh, funny enough, first my first time on film. Uh, it's called uh, High School Boot Camp. It was yeah, it, and uh, you can see me with hair, blonde hair, and blonde curly hair. And I say in the video. No more beef. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that was. But I said it. Right. So, yeah, if you want to see my the genesis of me, my origin. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just a, a normal like upbringing. Play sports. I did not play sports. What? No, I. I mean, I played when I was really small. So played like a little bit of soccer. Uh, you know, baseball. Dabbled in it, but never got like really, really heavy into it. I didn't start like being physically fit until I was uh, in my mid twenties. Okay, you go to college anywhere down here? Ever? No, I actually, dude, I gotta tell you, I uh, the fact that I am an anomaly within like whatever the uh, statistics would be for people like me, I got dropped out of ninth grade. Uh, well, I was I I was expelled. Uh, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> I dropped out. Yeah. Uh, so uh, and I ended up getting my my GED and ended up in college before my class was graduating high school. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it, it was just, you know, thank God I made the right decisions at the right time. Eagle Academy was was huge in that, and I uh, was able to kind of get back to a, a normal place, but uh, definitely an anomaly within that. And I was here in Florida. You mm -hmm. didn't go out of, out no, of state or anything no. like that? No, no. No, uh, my entire life has been in, in Florida in some way, shape, or form. That's what I say what, at one point in time when I retire, I'm going to. I'm gonna probably go somewhere where there's those things called seasons. Uh, All really right. Nice. Yeah. I just don't like cold weather, man. Like yeah. below fifty, and I'm like worthless. I don't want to go outside. <laughs> Get that Florida blood, man. Yes, yes. Actually, I, I was born in Jamaica, so I'm just used to. The oh, heat. total. Yeah, you're. Yeah, Caribbean <laughs> all the way. <laughs> yeah. 
So your brothers, anybody else in the family a firefighter or in the fire service? No, no one in my family's in the fire service, and that's I'm the first generation of it at this point. Uh, my my daughter, I don't know what she. I got a seven year old daughter. I don't know what she wants to do yet. I, I she's a doctor last week, uh, a, a nurse the week after, and then a teacher after that. But um, no, I you know, and I got to tell you, I my brother Josh, we talked about it. I was like, man, it might, might be a great career, but if he sees a needle or uh, sees blood, he like vomits and passes out. So I was like, that's probably not gonna work out for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my other brother Colby, he could probably pull it off. Uh, he's got the right mentality for it, but he works for a company that does large like uh, installs for like Mary Kay when they want to put on some, like a really big uh, production. He does that, and he. He is the uh, utter opposite of me. Like if if we go jet skiing on the weekend, uh, before we go out, he's pulling out his uh, the the manual and reading the instructions. I'm just like, hey, Who let's instructions. Yeah, I just I don't know. He does, uh, <laughs> but yeah, definitely not me. It's got to be a YouTube video here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So um, you how'd you end up? So you say you went to EMT school, you mm -hmm. went to primary school. Where did you go to the fire academy? Uh, uh, PBSC. It was PBCC at the time. Okay. We were actually, uh, we were the last class to go where uh, it used to be like right behind Palm Beach, uh, PBI, Palm Beach International. It was it, like in a hangar that was like right in that area. Yeah, Because we weren't allowed to uh, park. Uh, we weren't allowed to back into spots. We had to park head in so they could look at our license plates oh. and everything. But uh, yeah, we were the last class before they moved over to the the campus. And they have a really cool facility. So it was, it was a great it was a great place. I, uh, I, my, uh, the captain or the guy that was running it is uh, my instructor. His name was um, Kerry Weiss. The guy, Kerry was an awesome dude. He actually is the reason I got hired with Riviera. So it, it worked out really well. Which was the department I had, I had applied to. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, so you you, you get out of academy. Everything is great. How long did it take you to find a job? Because I don't know if it's the same as my experience was. It took me forever. At one point, I was like, I'm never gonna get a job. How long did you? Where, when did you get on? I got on, well, my first apartment was Monroe County. Okay. I was there for about a year. Then I worked in Deerfield Beach for three years. Yeah. And I came here in 2002. So I've probably been on about 24, 25 years. Okay. But it actually took me, after I went to fire school and became a medic. Yeah. And a fire inspector. I never took my state test. It took me about five or six years to get hired after that. Yeah. That was, that's the, most people were like that, man. Uh, until like now, like there people are desperate, like. Like, what do we need to give you for your job work? Right, which, right. which is crazy, man, because this literally is the greatest job in the world. Uh, I actually got hired in 2008, right in the middle of the hiring freeze. It, really? It, yeah. In fact, my keynote uh, speaker for my class, my mom was so mad <laughs> because he comes up and, like, does this speech. And at the end of the speech, he's essentially, he's like, and he literally, he's like hey, uh, 48 firefighters died last year doing our job. Uh, we're currently in the worst hiring freeze in uh, in, in modern history. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that was great. So, uh, no, we uh, – I got hired. And, and funny enough, man, and this is what I think, you know, fate, luck, whatever you want to believe, uh, I am graduating on a Thursday. Riviera is closing their applications on that Friday. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, so tight. So, uh, uh, Kerry Weiss, he says, hey, he goes – my 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 old department is hiring. You might guys might want to go there. No one to go because it was the lowest paying in South Florida at the time. I was like, I don't care. Like it's a job. So I went and applied, and uh, it took about six months uh, after that, and I got the call, which was incredible. And no one else in my class got hired for a few years. Like it took a long time for anyone to get hired because the hiring freeze was so right. bad. So. Yeah, I just didn't listen to other people because they were like, ah, I don't want to make thirty five grand. It was thirty two thousand dollars a year is what I was making when I started, and uh, we were thirty six. And I was like, I, dude, I don't care. It's a job, man. I'll take it. Is what I want to do. Similar with me, man. My first apartment, it was Key West. Who wants to commute to not yeah. Key West, but you can work at any one of the islands before they all started incorporating. Yeah. But it was twenty four thousand dollars, twenty two thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. No Kelly Day, mm -hmm. no union, mm -hmm. and people were like, no, I'm not going to go down there. I was like, dude, I just want a job. Yeah. We, I had a guy that worked for our department, uh, uh, Teams is his last name, guy's super, like, really, really knowledgeable guy. He worked there for eight years. And I was like, you don't have a Kelly Day? He goes, no, nah, no Kelly Day. And I was like, how long were you driving there? Because he lives in Broward. He was driving four hours to work. Four hours to work. And I was like, that is the dedication that most people don't possess, man. Like, because you couldn't live in the area because they got paid so little at the time. Right. And uh, so he couldn't afford to live there. So he had to drive 
from from Broward County down there, man. I was like, that's impressive. So when he got hired with us, he was like a 40 minute drive. It was the greatest day of his life. <laughs> Every wow. time he showed to work, yeah, it was super impressive. The one thing that I was I was most envious of was was the guys who lived in territory. Mm. It's like, hey man, I forgot my 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 pillow. Yeah. Oh yeah, we'll just run by the station. Or hey, my wife just made me dinner because yeah. whatever. I was just I was always jealous of that because I could never do that. Yeah. So it, it was cool finally getting a job here in Miami, and it was just like I said, man, it was just the best thing that's ever happened to me. That's awesome. Because I man. worked a bunch of terrible jobs, <laughs> flipped hamburgers. Yeah, oh yeah. Worked in factories. Oh yeah. Swept, win dicks. I mean, I've done everything. Yeah. And it's and you can typically tell that between the guys that get that are lucky and that they put the work the work in that re they're really really young. Uh, they got lucky and they get hired at you know eighteen or nineteen years old, whatever it is, and uh there's not the appreciation for the guy that's laying tiles on a roof for the mechanics that, cause when I was a mechanic, man, uh, we got paid, it's called flat rate. So we, you don't get paid an hourly rate. You get paid whatever that job pays. Right. So I could, there were days where I made 0.3 hours for the entire day. I changed one oil and that's what I made. So of my $15 an hour that I was making at the time. <laughs> like, I'm walking out of there with five bucks for the day. Like, crazy, man. So, like, not a lot of people have an appreciation for stuff like that. Wow. Uh, so, so you get hired. Do you remember your first call? Uh, I remember my first, like, major call. My first major, major, major call was, uh, <laughs> so, it, this lady gets in a car accident. We, they, we pull up on scene. I'm riding backwards on an engine and, or it was a ladder truck. And I, Go to jump out, but I don't have any bunker gear on because I we didn't have a crew class. It was you. Sh I swear to God, I still have a letter. You show up with enough. It said, uh, "Congratulations on your hire. You're showing up on June 18, 2008. Uh, bring enough food for 24 hours." <laughs> like that was the, that was the hire. I was like, "Oh, okay." We've since progressed, and now we have hiring classes. But so I show up there, and uh, this guy walks me in. He's like, uh, he goes, "Hey, man, uh, take this trash out every day. Mop the, these are the floors you're gonna mop." fill this ice bucket and he opened up the refrigerator and he goes, and if you touch my ketchup, I'm going to kill you. I was like, oh, okay, cool. That's a, <laughs> that's a little bit. Uh, so I, uh, yeah, we get, we, I get on my, uh, we get this call for, it was a motor vehicle accident. It was a beeline highway and uh, military. So it's a pretty significant speeds. So we get there, it's an extrication. I go, I jump out of the truck. I don't have my, my coat on. My captain's like, get your coat on rookie. I run back, grab my coat, like throw it on. And they are prepping the, the door. They're getting a purchase point to be able to uh, to uh, pop the door. I just grabbed the door and started pulling on it. And he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. I have so much adrenaline right now. <laughs> so it was, uh, it, it, it always, like, I always felt, like kind of returned back to that thought and remember, like, what it's like for that first call. But, yeah, it's it's it, it's the greatest job in the world, man. Like, and, and then it was just, you know, just an outrageous amount of ridiculous calls. We're able to sleep. I know my first day I was just like, I don't want to miss a call. And I was yeah. just like. We we have rookies that just sleep in the recliners. I'm like, dude, go to bed. Right. If you don't wake up, I'll come wake you up. Right. <laughs> like it's fine. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, how long have you been with um, Rivera Beach? Fifteen years. It, was that the only department you you applied for? Yeah. So it was just one and done. Dude, I got well. Actually, I was I was in the process with uh, City of Orlando at the time. Okay. So Solid department. Yeah, great department. Uh, I'd gone through like probably three quarters of their hiring process. Um, I think all I had left was like a chief's interview or something like that. So, uh, and I actually got the call for the chief's interview about three months into working for Riviera. Decisions, decisions. I was pretty, I was like, nah, I'm not going anywhere, man. <laughs> like, I'm already hired. Like I, I have, uh, I have a big issue with like changing things when they're like good. Like if right. I'm like, I got a job, plus I'm looking at everyone else around me that can't find jobs. They can't do anything. Uh, and God knows if Chronicles would have ever happened if I if I would. That probably would yeah. never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably not. We're, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's awesome, man. I, for me, my application, my job process was long. I, I applied from Key West to Orlando to Tampa, mm -hmm. and I was just doing the circuit, yep. just putting in applications, putting applications, doing interviews. I was like, I'm never gonna get hired, <laughs> but it finally happened. Yeah. So um, you have a great career. You've been on there. You said there what, 15. 15 years, yeah. and you're driver. Driver. Mm -hmm. And how long you been doing that? I just got promoted uh, about a year and a half, two years congrats, ago. Congrats. Yeah, dude, that was the that was the greatest day of my life, man. <laughs> it was so good, dude. How how was this, how was the process of of getting promoted? Is it like 
similar to us where you have to study. Guys yeah. Guys are like Adderall out. I mean, <laughs> no. Oh, they, they study. <laughs> <laughs> What you're not going to know is something got edited out in between. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's same with us. And, and what was what was cool to see was our department kind of step up and say like, "Hey, if we're the the drivers are going to be the next step to the captain, so we need to kind of set the bar." Uh, one thing they did that that was interesting is they made all the drivers become medics, and okay. yeah, so you had to be a medic before you could get promoted. Which there was mixed reviews about, mixed feelings about that, but. Uh, I thought it was a, it was a good thing. I you know the uh, grandfathering some people in probably would have been good, nice, but um, the it was cool to see them do that because what happened prior to that was if you could be a promoted driver and if a medic calls out on a box and they don't have any other medics, you get bumped down to the to the box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was, there was a, it didn't happen very often, but it did happen, and it you was. Get, you better get your rest of work. Yeah, yeah. Really I much. saw you out last night. You come to work, yeah. right? <laughs> we had guys like I'm going home, right? <laughs> so, uh, but no, they they stepped up, man, and they they kind of put implemented those types of things, and then they made the testing process like really hard, man. It was, it was really, really hard. In fact, I didn't pass it the first time. Like, yeah, I got a 69. Like I, I missed it by oh. one point. Yeah. Well, it is what it is, man. But they, they made it to where, um, you actually have to study to, to do it. So we, ours was, uh, gotta be a medic. You have to have your, uh, your pup operator and then your, uh, aerial operator as well. So, uh, it was cool, man. It was cool to sit down and, and pass the test and then do the hands-on portion of it. And, and, uh, I, I liked it, man. It was really cool. Awesome, man. Like here, if you're not putting in a thousand hours, you're not getting made. Because the guys who are, say what you want about this newer generation, younger generation, but they're a lot smarter. <laughs> and they're coming to the table. I mean, like high 90s is top 10. Dude, that's, we had, a, I want to say we had scores ranging from 98 to like 94. And it was all, that was, that was most of the people. Wow. So like, it was, it was very, you're right, man. Like you, you got to, especially in a department like this, bro, like you guys, what do you got? Like 500,000 people sitting for like, <laughs> like, it's insane, man. Like we got a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I got a ton of people sitting for that test, man. So you better score high. Otherwise yeah. it's not going to happen. How long is your, your, uh, list last two years? One year. One year. Oh, yeah. wow. Holy Every crap. Year. Let's go. So yeah, it, it listen, I, I came from smaller departments where Deerfield beach, somebody had to retire or die. For, yes. So for it, for him to be a list. Yes. And there we had what well, we had rule of threes. Yep. So if you piss off the wrong people. Yeah, they just skip right over you. They'll just yeah. skip right over you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, we've yep. seen that happen. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, we, I think, I think we have the rule of fives mm -hmm. with us, something like that. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but y you know what? For the most part, the chiefs are really good, man. They just, they follow the, as long as you, like you said, you're, you haven't done something like ridiculous. Um, but yeah, man, it, it, the, I can honestly say the promotional studying, the taking the test and all is probably one of the most stressful things you will deal with, man. It is. It's, it's cause it's really, really, really like it's taxing, man. And you don't want to do it again. No, no. I got to, at some point in the next three to four years, try to get promoted to captain. And that's, I mean, that's going to be, it's a lot, man. That was probably the, the most I've ever studied because for a lieutenant, there, there's more spots. Yeah. So you, you can study and kind of get by with it but for the captain's test i was i didn't go out yeah my weekends were gone yeah it was just wake up study wake yep. up study wake up study and yeah it was just yeah you you only wanted to do it once yeah <laughs> yeah, dude. yeah and i understand that man but those like again it, it's good for it's good for yourself it's good for, you know if you get stuck on the box or even if you get just stuck being a firefighter for too long, man, like unless that is just what you love, man, you just love routine showing up every day. Great. That's good. Good for you. But for a lot of guys, especially guys that are stuck in the ambulance, man, if you, you like that, that takes a really big toll on you, man. Like kind of getting off that is, is it's good refreshing mentally. Uh, but also, you know, not just getting beat to death every shift, man. It's good. It's a young man's game on that side. You know, it's definitely a young man's game. Yeah. Two back surgeries, knee surgery. You yeah. just, yeah. Yeah. It's a young person's game. It is. And and it's just like some of the it's just a routine calls, but if if you have to give I don't mind giving a whole drug box or mm -hmm. going to a blazing fire, but it's just some of those routine calls that's just like uh Yeah. It it, it does take a toll. Mm -hmm. So you plan on getting promoted to captain and 
Have you thought about being a chief or no god yes. no. nobody wants that that sucks <laughs> the world the, the the fire service as as a whole will implode if i become a chief <laughs> i thought about it but i'm like nah uh, i'm good i'm no. good i can't have as much fun anymore yeah nah you know what and that's that's uh with this with the position i'm in now if i don't get promoted i'm fine with that like right. it's it's like I, I genuinely enjoy my job and i enjoy because i get to drive the calls i love that part uh, I get to pump fires, like the you know, first 10 minutes of a fire, I'm the busiest person running around there, you know, making sure Absolutely. everything's set. So, and I love that piece of it, but also I do like EMS calls when they're exciting. Like I love jumping in and, and taking over or, 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 you know, supplementing the, the lead medic that's there. Like, I love that piece of it, man. Cause there's just something really exciting about that. Uh, but once you get to that, that chief's, uh, no way, man, you're just, and any, any like chief will tell you, you just become like a glorified babysitter at that That's point it. in time. You're just like, you're like trying to deal with personalities and strong <laughs> babysitting just, adults, adult like, men. You can't say that to another person on the job. Like you're gonna get fired. <laughs> Please don't do that. Anymore. So I mean, chiefs do a great job, man. A good chief on a on a like a good fire, like a, a good instant commander, man. That's it's it's so incredible to watch them run a scene with you know 20 units running around and it's very very cool but the day-to-day -day, man that's that's it's taxing it's taxing for you know a lot of them yeah so um we we, we get to the big question fire department chronicles mm. like how what was the genesis of that how did that come about i say uh the genesis of it is is i am i'm not special like uh, it like there's a there's a thousand of me across the the world um, you know, cause you put a bunch of guys and girls together who have the same kind of mentality. We're going to end up doing some, some stupid stuff. And, and now with technology, there's probably gonna be a camera involved. Uh, but yeah, we we're just messing around the station. Like the whole thing started, uh, with us, it was national geographics fire department edition. Okay. We were, we were hunting for different, uh, positions. Uh, it was, uh, you know, started off with the firefighter. We hunted for him and he was taking a nap in the back. And then, uh, the driver engineer, he was, uh, sitting in a recliner eating a bowl of ice cream. Uh, actually, he was sleeping, and I went and I, when I went up to him and got him excited. He started to get mad, and I handed him a bowl of ice cream, and he was like, "Thank you." And just like that, that's, that's what, uh, but the one that kind of like accelerated it, uh, yeah. started getting some good views, was uh, the paramedic. And uh, we were we were uh, we were hunting for them via their natural mating call, which was bitching. Um, and, and so it uh, it was just it was really fun man just to see that that kind of morph into what it's become today but i've always said from the beginning anytime i was making fun of a, a firefighter paramedic or emt or driver or whatever it was it was me making fun of myself like right. something i've probably done at some point in time during my career We're or everyone kind of, yeah exactly um so it's uh yeah it's, it's it's morphed into something i never thought it would be but it's been it's been really really cool and any pushback from the guys or the chiefs, who were you probably from admin, probably they probably had a few words yes, with you. Yeah. Uh so my chief at the time uh was super cool about the whole thing. And he came to me and he was like, Hey, listen. He goes, Some people aren't gonna like what you're doing. He goes, I think it's great, it's cool, it's like it's lighthearted. You know, I always stayed away from race, religion, and politics, no cursing in any of my videos. Like I made sure like it's family friendly, which is very cool because I'll meet families and a three-year-old the three-year-old uh son or daughter knows my name they're like wow. I love your videos yeah and then i i meet a 85 year old captain he's from louisiana he's got that th that thick nolan's accent he's like i love your videos <laughs> I was like, that's freaking awesome man so um the, it's i've always tried to keep it to where anyone can watch it at any point in time but uh my chief at the time he was like hey look you know i i like what you're doing some people won't like it but i'll, I'll tell you three things he goes um, don't put the department in anything. Like, I don't want to see any logos. He said, don't do anything stupid. Like, don't, don't be riding on top of fire trucks or anything. Uh, and if you get fired, you do this for yourself. I was like, <laughs> all right, man, <laughs> you got a deal, bro. Noted. So, yeah, noted. So I just, I kind of, I stuck with that. I, I, I stayed with those things. Um, and then I, he actually left, we got a new chief and our new chief is, uh, he's incredible, man. He's been really, really supportive and I've tried to show the same support back. So, uh, and there's things that I believe in um we would run calls and i would like see these little kids and, and just sometimes uh you know parents can't afford the christmas gifts or whatever and it, it is it's unfortunate so i was like i, I don't i never want a kid showing up you know december 26th or, or whatever and, and and talking about all the other kids are talking about how santa claus brought them something but they didn't get right. something i don't ever want kids to feel not special so we adopt uh last year we adopted three families oh really yeah so we'll, we'll adopt families in the area we'll buy them christmas presents uh give them to the parents so they can give them to the kids like we don't we don't want to take awesome. we show up in the fire truck say santa claus dropped them off and and we bring them to them and then we buy uh uh, Christmas dinner for the families as well. So Excellent. they can have some stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah. Excellent. Wow, man. Yeah, we do something that's similar to that to here. We go to the hospital for the people for the kids who can't go. But that's that's yeah. that's awesome, man. I appreciate so, it. So um what's what's next? Is this thing has this are you satisfied with where you are now or is this gonna morph into something else? What's next for you? Uh, I never know what's next, man. <laughs> so, no, I I am outrageously satisfied with the way that this has turned out today, or to to the, to date. I think it's incredible, man. The community that's come behind it. We have, you know, just found like a good sense of humor for everybody that everyone can kind of laugh at. It's lighthearted. You know, we, we see enough bad stuff, man. So it's good to be able to like relax a little bit. There are things you can't unsee. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. So. Um, no, nah, man, I, I, I'm very happy with the way it is. Uh, hopefully it'll keep expanding. Um, we've had talks of TV shows, which we'll see how that goes. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, it'll be really fun. And then obviously grow on fire department coffee as much as possible. We've, we've been able to create some really fun, uh, videos with that, those productions as well. And those are our like large productions. So we're like blowing up cars with water or, or whatever. <laughs> we, we did a, f uh, firefighter versus flamethrower, which is probably one of my favorite videos. I, my it, friend of mine had one of those. Oh, that really? Thing was awesome. Dude, uh, flamethrowers are the coolest and scariest things you will ever handle in your life, bro. It's so scary. So, uh, but yeah, we wanted to see, uh, how many GPMs it took to stop uh, a certain amount of BTUs, and it was it was really really cool. Wow, that must mm -hmm. have been awesome. It was. It was very cool. So so fire department coffee is yeah. one of the reasons why you're here too. So tell us about fire department fire department coffee and, yep. and what did it you do? So uh, fire department coffee started 2016. It was founded by uh, our CEO Luke Schneider. He's a Navy veteran. He was a Rockford firefighter at the time, and uh, he founded it uh, just love for coffee that kind of thing. I met him about six months later. And we, we said from the beginning, we were like, hey, um, we need to be able to give back within this, the model of it, the foundation should be supporting brothers and sisters that are sick or injured. So we, uh, we created the Fire Department Coffee Charitable Foundation. And then the reason we are here is three months ago, we said we wanted to find a local fire department and, uh, or, a, you know, whatever it is, it's uh, Green Bay, Miami. Um, and we wanted to be able to support the fire departments and give back to the resiliency funds or give back to their benevolence to be able to support those sick and injured first responders. So, uh, it's been cool, man. It's been a, a, a whole new adventure and designing like designs that make sense to people like this freaking, the salty flamingo. Like, yes. <laughs> and we want, and that's the thing is like every single region is going to be different. We did leather cheese heads for, um, for uh, green Bay. Um, they must be pissed Aaron left. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. We just, did he just blow his Achilles out like, yes. like two days ago? Like, play. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah, not good. Not good at all. Yeah. All right. So you just saw him hooked up with us with the Salty Flamingo and, and what's next? So, uh, we're in talks with a couple departments, one, uh, Indianapolis, we're going to do some, uh, hope some fun stuff with them. Uh, obviously with FDIC being up there, uh, and we were just up there with, uh, the NHRA we're the official coffee of the national hot rod association, which is very cool, man. Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. Wait, I think I saw something with NASCAR. You guys. Yeah. And we're in NASCAR as well. Yeah. 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 Come well, on. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we're not worthy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Indianapolis. And then we are in talks with a very large department in New York. So, yeah. I wonder who yeah. that could be. <laughs> so, I, I, I got to tell you about the first time I saw you because I, I, I saw you through your videos first. And then I did some Fool's Conference. It was probably in Broward or something like that. And you came to speak. I was like, I'm ready to laugh my <laughs> butt off. And you came up there, you said a few jokes, and then you got into mental health. Yeah. And I was just like, I was like, I like this dude even more. Thanks, man. So it, it, re it really brought things back to home because we have a lot of guys here in our department or, or that are struggling with it. And, and, and at least for me, I was, I was a fan from, from, from even more of a fan after that, man. That. And you actually, funny enough, you saw the first speech. Really? So, yeah, that, that Fool's one was the first one I ever did. And it was, yeah, I had written, I had written or put together the PowerPoint and everything. And I was kind of like massaging out the concept, but I knew what I wanted to say. So you got to see the first one, man. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, it's, wow. It's, it's changed a bit since then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I don't know if you saw the one that I did uh, here for uh, one of your resiliency. Which one was it? Uh, Chaco? Was it, it was just um, before Kyle. Chaco. Yeah, Kyle. Kyle? Yeah, Kyle. Yeah. yeah, and I saw you then. I was just like, yeah. man. <laughs> That guy, uh, uh, Gio Her uh, Herrera, he got so mad at me because I pulled him into the, 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 the thing. He's like, he's like, bro, you can't tell me what we're crying. I was like, no, I got to tell everybody, buddy. We're, we're supposed to cry, man. It's cool, dude. <laughs> yeah, man, you definitely come down and, and you've been to all of our events. Thank you mm -hmm. for supporting us and, and being part of the 
unofficial MD, well, MDFR family. Yeah, of course. Man. And I'm, so you, you, you knocked that out of the park. Um, any, any things of doing like a comedy show or, or are, you, are you on the road or, or we still do that? And I've talked, so I travel now to do speeches. I travel for the, for the, um, I call it how to hug 101. Uh, okay. yeah, just real basic, like human emotion, thought processes, expressing feelings is normal, that kind of thing. Uh, I've had a bunch of people ask me if I want to do stand-up comedy. I know I could blow it out of the water with stand-up comedy, but it wouldn't be what I do now because right. be, I, I couldn't keep it clean the way that I like telling jokes. So um, I just think it's one of those things that I am I might just live in my mind saying that I would have sold out arenas, uh, but I just never tried to attempt it. So, you know. <laughs> but no, you're, you're definitely so funny, 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 funny guy. I appreciate it, man. Then where can people find you? Now, if, if they... If you've been living under a rock, <laughs> for the people who live under a rock, how, how can they find you and how can they find Fire Department Coffee? Absolutely. So uh, for Chronicles, just uh, any of the Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, TikTok, all the fun stuff. Same thing with coffee on all the same channels, Twitter. Um, but uh, if you want to support uh, Metro Dade and uh, support fire, fire firefighters in general, then you can go on firedepartmentcoffee.com. You can be able to, right when you pull up the home screen, you'll see the shirt and uh, coffee club of the month. Buy that. And it's $5 from every shirt, $2 from every bag of coffee. It goes back to helping sick and injured first responders. Awesome, man. Thank you, man. Hey, thank you for coming today. Appreciate Good talk. It. And um, hopefully we'll have you back soon. Yeah, let's go.